Hello everybody, my name is Alice Cole. I'm from Singapore, I'm staying at Chokikan. I'm very glad here to share some of my experience uh, before I fall sick and after and what I am now. It actually happened uh, last September. I was very curious and uh, very excited to get a baby after three, three years of marriage. So I visited my gynae nearby my house there. So I thought uh, there must be some good news from my gynae. Unfortunately, the bad news came to me. I was uh, advised to send straight to the hospital when the doctor, the gynae actually suspects something is wrong with my blood. I, I can't believe uh, there's some kind of serious sickness, so I say no to the doctor that I do not want to go and uh, have a thorough checkup. But my gynae uh, look at me and say, no, at least this time is very serious. We need you to go to the hospital straight away and it must be within 24 hours. I got worried, but still too stubborn to accept it. So on my way there to the hospital Actually what really happened to you? Uh, okay, I actually felt uh, uh, recently very uh, tired hmm. Getting tired and weaker uh, And my purpose is not to check my health but And when I'm at the hospital at Mount Elizabeth I was actually examined by one of the blood specialists in the hospital I waited and waited for my report but uh, until late evening, the report is still not out. So I realized there must be something very serious. So I was advised to be admitted at the hospital under observation waiting for the report. I was too stubborn and tell the professional, say, no, I'm not going to stay in the hospital. Let me go back. Don't worry, I'll come back tomorrow. Actually, I'm trying to lie to him. I do not want to go back. So he allowed me to go back home. When I reached home, I was pretty worried uh, what will happen to me when I go back the next morning. So uh, I actually clean up the whole place, you know, pack up my husband's wardrobe, iron the clothes for him just because I'm scared. I'm very, very scared that I won't be able to come back tomorrow. So early morning when I go back to the hospital at Mount Elizabeth, the doctor do not want to preview the report to me. He said, at least you need to meet your family members I said, don't worry doctor, I'm already 32 days here, I'm already an adult. Um, I think I can take the pressure and I can decide my own decision. The doctor said, no, you really need to meet your family members. And I insisted that the doctor should tell me frankly what happened to me. So the doctor, without delay, he tell me, uh, Alice, I'm sorry, uh, it's bad news for you. There's some blood disorder in your body. I look at him a very curious way and say what kind of blood disorder I don't understand. He said uh, we call it leukemia. And I still ask him what is that again? The reason why I keep on asking him is because I can't believe that I got this kind of diseases. So uh, straight away I called my husband to rush down to the hospital to receive the bad news. Both of us uh, actually lost of words. We do not know what to do. And from the doctor's advice, uh, there's, there isn't any treatment at all. Even though uh, we are able to get a uh, bone marrow transplant, the chances is only 1 is to 20 million patients. So after operation, the survival chances is only 30%. And the lifetime is to live another 1 to 3 years. But I have to spend sing dollar, about 30,000 over dollar to do the operation. So I tell the doctor, say, <laughs> I actually smile at him and say, no, I don't think I want to take up the challenge. The reason why is only 30% and it's not a treatment, it's just to risk my life to try my luck. So all along, I have not struck, I struck any lottery before, so I know I don't have any good luck. So I tell the doctor, no, I'm not going to try my luck this time. Please let me go home. Uh, do some ha happy things for my family and my husband. So he, the doctor, uh, Professor Tan, actually wanted me to be admitted straight away. Still, I tell him, no, I want to go out, go back home. Uh, the doctor said, no, you have to stay in. So uh, I, I'm a very stubborn person, so I insisted 
for a hospital transfer. Mm. I don't want to stay in that. What is the condition about your sickness? Like the birth cell? Okay. Huh? When, when the doctor say the in their history record, they have never seen white blood cell at 200,000 count. Mm. And uh, normal healthy people is about 24,000 plus and minus. So mine is 200,000. 200,000? Uh, nobody can believe I'm still alive at mm. that kind of reading. So when I request for a transfer, I, I told him a reason because I don't think I can afford to pay that much. And because it's a private hospital, it's very, very expensive. So when I, when I requested for a transfer, Early in the morning, 8 o'clock, they actually put me on the bed, pushed me straight to the operation room. During that time, I started to shiver. I started to get very, very scared. Very, very worried. I knew this time, I can't make it. Uh, the doctor actually wanted to confirm the disease, so they need to actually take out one of my bone marrow to do an experiment. So during that time, they actually did not take out one, they took out three from me. Without any injection, I'm lying, lying down there for them to actually take out the bone marrow. I tell myself, this is the first and the last time I'm not going to try it again. It's so terrible, it's so painful, it's so scary. So, um, sorry. After the operation, I was pushed back to the my my bedroom in the hospital. I was staying at ward seven. That moment onward, I can't move. I lie flat on the bed. I can't go to the washroom myself. I have to use a basin at the bed. You know, when I need to pass out. I f I felt so terrible. I felt so useless. I felt so dead. I'm just dead during that time. I tell myself, I want to go home. I'm not going to stay here. I don't go through any treatment. So every minute, I see people coming to visit me. Every day around my bed, there's so many faces around me. It's just like telling me goodbye. During that time, I actually requested the nurse, please don't let so many people into my room. I can't take it anymore. You know, in my room, there's a cards and flowers from friends and relatives. It's like a flower shop. <laughs> Until the nurses requested to be removed with it. It's too much. Just imagine every minute there's people visiting me. So I know that's it. So on the first day, second day, third day, my my weight is actually 57 kg during that time and it actually dropped down to 42 during that very day after the grit and uh, the blood uh, you know they have to take out every day my hair loss my nails start to get very purplish my lips start to crack I got no strength to eat I got no strength to talk I got no strength to do anything not even strength to think about anything. It's like uh, breathless. I can't breathe anymore. So slowly on the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, eighth day, and I've been pestering the professor to release me because I'm not going to die in the hospital. I want to go back home and die on my pretty bed, my comfortable bed. So uh, <laughs> After persuading the doctor saying yes, you may go home, but on one condition, I have to be on bridge on my way home. I tell the doctor, no, I'm not going to hang the bridge, you know, on my way home. All my neighbors will be able to see me in such a terrible stage. So they allow me until I reach home, not allowed to see anybody except my mother-in-law. She actually take care of me, cook for me. Even though there's someone beside me to take care of me, but mentally no one can take care of. I'm already very stressful during the time. Even my neighbors, I dare not see them. I shut the door, I shut the windows. Even phone rings, I dare not pick up. I dare not speak anybody about my sickness. I have friends.
spread 10 years back with a lost contact from US, from a lot of Malaysia. You know, everybody rushed from their hometown to visit me at my place in Singapore. I felt so terrible. And I actually tell myself, it's really unfair for me. I still feel young at my age of 32. There's still so much thing that I have not, have not do. That's my family planning. I wanted to have many babies actually. And I want to take care of my parents-in-law, my parents, and my two younger sisters. I just can't leave everybody. So, it was once actually uh, one of my girlfriend, she actually tell me about one of the product but my husband actually rejected to say this person. They say no sorry, my, my wife, I mean myself, I can't cope with any medicine anymore. In my cupboard, there's all kind of herbs, Chinese herbs, medicine from the hospital and you know, every day I have been doing prayers by speaking, I'm a free thinker. But during that time, I got no one to go to except praying. So I actually gave up day after day. I try not to show my sorrow to anyone else during that time. I try to keep myself calm. But when the lights is off, tears come back. <laughs> myself I have to be strong in the time but God never helped me so that was once actually one day one one fine day one of my girlfriend actually called me saying Alice I remember a few months back that was about six months back that you mentioned about a product which can cure cancer so without hesitation, I called the person who had recommended me about that product. So I called up and said, remember you mentioned me about a kind of product that can cure cancer? So straight away, this person, which is my upline now, Dana, she actually brought one of her upline, Shan Shan, to my home to explain to me about this particular product, which we call Spirina. I was not convinced because I thought it's another type of medicine again. But uh, what I was convinced is they really put in their heart to share with me about this particular product, Spirina. After a few hours of sharing, I know they felt tired. So I called my husband up about this product. My husband stopped me from uh, buying this product. But on his way home, when he, he reached home and met uh, my upline, Dana and uh, Shanshan, he was half convinced by the product. So Because we, the books, is it? Uh, because the reading the books? No, the patient, they waited for my husband to come back to mm. actually re-explain and mm. share with him all over again. They were really very patient people. So I asked myself, who are they? They are just strangers to me. They, they, they are not, uh, you know, they are not related to me. None of my friends or relatives, but they really put in their heart and they are so patient to share with me about the product. That is what they convinced me initially, not mm. the product, but their heart. Mm. So during that time, we uh, after deep talk actually, <laughs> then we purchased one bottle of Spirina that is two thousand five tablets. Mm. After buying it, we did not, I did not start uh, taking it. I actually put it at the cupboard there. So the second day when they actually follow up to call, Hi Alice, have you actually started taking Spirina? I dare not tell them. I tell them yes. So after putting down the phone, then I start taking it. Mm -hmm. So on the first day, second day, I actually started taking five tablets a time. So uh, 15 tablets a day. Unfortunately, on the second day and third day, my situation get terrible. My head is so pain, like bursting. My blood stain become more, you know, the saliva that I actually throw out have more and more blood stain. My whole body is like ends by pain. My, my bones is cracking. I am spreadless. I can't move myself. I'm flat on the bed. I know this time I'm dying. Really, I'm dying. 
So a couple later, I think my husband came back at night. He wanted to actually send me straight to the hospital, but I told him no because I know same thing. If I go back to the hospital, I won't be able to be discharged. So I said, please let me die on my bed. I'm not going. I'm not going. So I tolerated until the next morning. Then uh, actually Shasha, they all called up to follow up. I told them I felt terrible. So they actually advised me to reduce the dosage. So I reduced it from uh, five to three tablets at a time. So the situation actually improved a little and a little at the time. I felt better, you know, the headache go off a little. My pain go off a little, everything go off just a little. So when the days pass by on the fourth day, fifth day, and all the way until the third week, when I had to go back for my blood test again, I was uh, quite amazed from the report. Uh, yeah, actually, the white blood cell actually ran down. That was a uh, 4,008 the time. I was very shocked. So. Without sharing my joy with anyone, I go back, <laughs> I look at the, the product again, where I took up the books and read, how come the, the product is so amazing? I just can't believe it. So when my husband came back, I shared him about the good news in my blood town. So I actually decided to give up all my medication and concentrate on spirina itself. I'm actually risking my life. I know I can't do that. But I want to prove to myself that the product is very effective for my uh, white blood cell control. So I gave up all my medication including Chinese herbs and my hospital medication totally, only on spirina. So without uh, uh, asking the doctors and my upline advice, I increased my dosage 10 times uh, in, uh, per intake. So one day I'm actually taking 30 tablets a time. So my my result actually improved very much on the third week, fourth week, fifth week. And on the sixth week, same thing, I have to go back to the hospital again. Wow, this time the feeling is like, you know, little girl from the school coming back from the report card, you know, sharing with someone, hey, I got A this time. So this time I call everybody. My blood count went down again. I was so glad. I was so happy. I know this is the hope. The hope is coming. Just because I'm giving myself a chance, I did not give up spirina. I'm very constant in taking spirina. So on the six weeks, since the report is so great, I continue. And this time, I started to take 60 tablets a day. Uh, which is a very daring move from originally 5, 10, and 60. And the report actually, every time, it gave me great, great hope. And that is why I'm here, I'm able to sit here to talk to everyone. And I, I wanted to share everybody why I started Spirina is because I tell myself, if you give yourself a chance, there's always a hope. If you never give yourself a chance, there's always zero hope. In fact, I'm, I'm really a very, very daring person. How dare am I to be myself, a doctor, to give up all my medication, my Chinese herb, everything, such a So on that day, actually, my parents, my husband, and including my upline, San San, they actually scolded me. This time I've been scolded by them. How dare I am to actually give up the medication on my own side of it. So uh, after scolding, <laughs> I actually uh, uh, take back my medication with spirina. This time it worked even best. And with the help of our water, which mm. I started drinking uh, on the second week, mm. and until today, there's a great changes, not just my health, even my skin, my nails, you know, the purplish color actually go off. Mm. My nails start to grow very naturally without cracking my skin uh, actually not that dry now which you all can see and i got no problems putting on makeup now which i mm. have problem during that time where i have uh, under medication so so especially it's the spirina and biopure water really help you a lot spirina, yes yeah. 
So this is the show and I would like to tell everyone who is listening to me now. Give yourself a chance because Spani Spirina, they, they are so natural, they are not on medication which I touched before.